Hi everyone, welcome to Adrian's Digital Basement. I want to introduce you to someone new in my collection. I mean someone, if I'm talking about computers as people. It's an IBM PC Junior. I just picked this up the other day. I got this for 60 bucks. This is exactly how it was as I brought it home. So I got the original PC Junior monitor with this and it seems to be in pretty good shape actually. The only real thing I noticed is it is missing the IBM logo here, so that's a little unfortunate. If you happen to know where I can get these, maybe a source, let me know. I don't know what this kind of tape is. Is it is the label underneath? Oh wow, wait, look at this. What the heck? <laughs> okay, why is there this tape over the sticker? That's amazing, and um, look at that, great condition. The CRT itself appears to have a couple scratches on the glass, nothing serious, but yep, that scratch right there, that is actually in the glass. So, you know, it is what it is. These monitors, you know, it's probably seen hard life. It's funny it's got scratches because I don't see any other marks anywhere else on here. The monitor on the top and sides and whatnot just is dirty. It's just it's a bit dusty but otherwise in pretty good shape. Now the PC Junior has a proprietary video connection, so even though this is just a CGA monitor, take a look at this strange connector it's got on here. So this is a fixed cable, which is a good thing because you can imagine it would probably be lost if it weren't attached to the monitor. Uh, taking a look at the back here, it does say IBM 4863 on this label here. The serial number actually looks pretty low, 29,351. Does anyone actually know how many of these were made? Because that's pretty low. We have a couple controls for V-size, V-hold, and the permanent input cables. So I don't have the chiclet keyboard. I have this later IBM keyboard. And it's pretty dirty. All the keys are accounted for, so that's good. Oh, it does feel very mushy and horrible. And unlike the monitor, this actually does have a missing label. So I do need a replacement. Let me know if you know where to get replacements here. This is an infrared wireless keyboard, so those two holes there are the transmitters, and I think this is the receiver. But you can hook this up with what looks like a telephone cord, and it did come with one, so I assume you can bypass the wireless and just plug this into the back of the computer. Not, not much to report back here. We have space for what looks like four AA batteries, perhaps. It does say IBM 1983 there. Ooh, nice, no batteries were installed which means no corrosion on the contacts. That's excellent. And here we have the PC Junior itself. Now I've never actually seen one of these in person and what really struck me is how small this is, especially compared to say the 5150 or 5160. They really made this to, you know, small to be kind of like the home personal computer, I guess. Built-in floppy drive actually has a disc in here, 622 Junior boot. It's funny, the floppy drive handle seems backwards of what I would expect. We got two cartridge slots. I guess there was like basic and some other cartridges that you could get. On the top here, do we do have a PC Junior logo, so that's not missing. That's nice. Appears to be made out of all plastic, so it's pretty light. And on the back, all of these ridiculous proprietary IBM ports here. Display, there's just pins in there. S, C, P for power, M for modem, I suppose. There's nothing in there, so I guess there's no modem. And then what, J, joysticks, two joystick ports, L, K, L, P, T. You know, to be honest, um, I don't know about plugging that keyboard in. I don't see any kind of keyboard connection here. I assume the K is keyboard, but that has pins in there. So clearly a phone cord is not going to work. So one of my big issues with this machine is right here. The power switch and this strange power connector. There's a couple pins in there. I do not have the power supply. The guy who sold this to me said he was selling it for a cousin who said the computer belonged to his uncle who had unfortunately passed away. The power supply was missing or maybe they threw it away without realizing. So I don't have it. So we're gonna have to work on that. I don't even know this machine works. Let's take a look at the bottom here. So there's not much on here except for this sticker which shows a serial number that seems a lot higher than that monitor, 267. 175896. So don't really know how that works, but it does say 1983. 
Okay, so first order of business is opening and I took a quick peek online and I think it said you have to take the side panel off. This is where one of those side cars goes. Well, that's, I don't like how it bends. <laughs> All right, with the cover off, we see where the side car would go. So it screws on the side and I think this is sort of like a similar to the ISA bus here, plus some other PC Junior signals. I think I use a screwdriver and I think I have to pop into these little slots. I see what looks like <laughs> marks from probably previous openings of this machine. Oh yes, look at that. That sucks. Kind of, it's gonna mar up the plastic every time you open it. There we go. Pop the lid. All right, now we see inside. So I think, and someone can correct me if I'm wrong, but this is the floppy controller here with these little small connectors. Definitely not ISA bus. So this is the floppy. There appears to be a hidden f cooling fan underneath there. So I guess it's not a totally fanless design. I don't know what this is, maybe ROM or CPU or something. And there we have is the power supply. And from what I do know, this power supply board takes some kind of an AC input voltage or something like that, like 17 volts or I don't know what it is. And then it's a switching power supply and it makes the rest of the voltages for the computer. So this is sitting in a slot. There we go, see it just pulls right out. So these deliver the voltages to the motherboard and then I probably have a cooling fan connection here, and then we probably have the floppy drive cable here. So really it's about me figuring out how I can power this thing up. Well, inside this box is my solution to powering the PC Junior. Now this comes from AKBKUKU. I don't know if there's a quicker way to say your channel, but he uh, had a whole series where he had a PC Junior also with no power supply, and he made an adapter to allow you to use an ATX power supply to power the PC Junior. And of course, a big bulky ATX power supply doesn't make a lot of sense. You'd want to use a Pico ATX power supply, those little tiny ones that are just little, you take 24 volts in and you get various voltages. So anyways, uh, let me open this up and we'll take a look at it. It's gonna be a kit, so I'm gonna have to build it and we'll do it together. All right, he gives me everything I'm gonna need. It's very reasonably priced. Uh, he has a link to it on his video, so check out his channel. It comes out to about $20 shipped for everything. It comes with everything you need to make the power supply, including this very nicely made and well-designed PCB. We have a power connector for the floppy drive. We have the ATX power supply connector. We have some extra components. And what this is, is when you have the Pico ATX power supply, it can actually fit inside the PC Junior with this connector on board here. And what he's done is printed these brackets and given you this very expensive switch, which matches the one that's on there. And this allows you with this to turn the Pico ATX power supply on and off with this power switch. And then you would also mount right here, the, the DC barrel connector input for the Pico ATX. So you just plug a regular DC power supply in, you have a switch right here, and you can turn it off and on. So let's build this up and uh, give it a test. Oh, this is great. So these wires here, this is for this connector here. He already crimped them on and I know these are impossible to get on if you don't have the right crimp tool, which I do not have. So he already awesomely stripped and crimped these. Okay, so Here's the board and the contacts on the connector are only on one side. So these contacts here face that direction. But first we're gonna plug in the fan and we're gonna plug in the power supply. And we're gonna, I mean, we're gonna plug in the floppy drive. Like that. And we connect this in there like that. This here is the power switch. So I'm just gonna route that out the back of the case. 
Here's the ATX power supply I'm going to use. It's kind of an old one, but it does work. I'm trying to find the label. Here we go, it's an A-Open 235 watt. And uh, this one does have minus 12 and plus 12. I'm not sure if all ATX power supplies have that, but I think this computer does need the minus 12. Plug that in there like that. I have the power switch right here hanging out the back, so it's not gonna short. I need to get a monitor so we can see this thing power up if it even does. Okay, here's the monitor. I have it connected to the back. Let's plug a power cable into this ATX power supply. Realize this power supply has no power switch, so it's gonna be on. Okay, what's gonna happen? Let's see. Boy, should I turn the monitor on? Okay, so it's the floppy drive light seems to be on. I don't even know if the monitor works. Look at that! Oh, 128 KB Air B. So this is the first time this computer is turning on. <laughs> okay, first of all, the monitor... Yeah, it seems okay, actually. I'd say the contrast knob is a little sketchy. Brightness. Hey, you know, this is actually quite sharp. And there's a volume knob here. You hear a little bit of a tone. All right, Houston, we may have a problem. <laughs> now I'm gonna have to go look online. Right here, there's a connector in these posts. And there doesn't appear to be anything behind this little hole that I would think would be the infrared sensor. So is that the infrared sensor that would normally be plugged in there? And is that just missing? Yeah, so looking inside the computer, I do not see, I do not see any kind of infrared receiver in there. So even if this thing was transmitting infrared, I don't even see how it would be possible for this to pick it up. They gave me this cord, this, this phone wire came with the keyboard, but this is just a normal phone cable. It's got an RJ kind of 11 on both ends and it does connect to the keyboard, but it's a very short cord so it wouldn't even reach to the back of the computer. But I don't even see any kind of connector on the back that's RJ11. So there's just no way that this was this was the cable that was being used. Well, I think that brings my PC Junior adventure to an end. Um, <laughs> the keyboard problem is kind of a bad one. I'm glad to know, uh, using this great ATX adapter, that this computer at least powers on. We have this B error, but the monitor is nice and clear, and the computer is working, so that's great but I would like to try some software on here, so I'd like to get it at least booting into DOS. So if you have any suggestions or leads on ways to fix this stuff, I'd love to hear it and put it in the comment section below. Well, for now, if you like this video, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. You can subscribe for more videos. Maybe there'll be some more on this in the future. And if you didn't like this video, you know, you can give it a thumbs down. And thanks for watching. Bye.